heard of William Branham? Okay, John G. Lake, yes. Maria Woodworth Eder, Jack Cole. Okay, there's only one difference between them and Paul Cain. They're already with the Lord. Paul Cain is still here with us. That is the realm that Paul Cain walks in, in the realm of the Spirit. And uh, like I said, we don't really understand the fullness of this brother being able to be with us here, of what it means in the Spirit. And again, I, I just believe that this time of the seed that is being sown in this region, that God has, has desired to honor us to have this servant of the Lord with us tonight. Now, he's going, like I said, to, uh, to release what he has. When he's finished, he's finished. He's not going to make anything up. And I, I believe that uh, it might even be a tag team between him and Brother Luke. But if you understand church history, and you begin to follow these men and women of God that, that the Lord used so mightily, uh, Paul Cain is one of those. In fact, he ministered with William Branham when he was just a young man. That's how far back he goes. Now, if you don't understand who William Branham is, then you really need to read about these, these giants in the faith. Things that they did. Awesome, awesome, supernatural things that they have released. Paul Cain, as uh, was told to you, uh, his mother had uh, some heart problems. She had huge tumors. Uh, had uh, cancer in each breast, tuberculosis. And they told her that she might well just go ahead and go home and die, that she would never be able to, to bear this child. And the angel of the Lord visited him, visited her, and told her, You will not die, you shall live. And your son shall be born, you will call him Paul, for he will be like the apostle Paul. I will send him to kings and to presidents and magistrates, and I will speak words to other nations. You know, Brother Paul Cain was even graced by the Lord to go and to speak to Saddam Hussein. So um, we're talking about awesome supernatural things that Paul Cain has been able to witness in his lifetime. And, and for us to be graced, you know, with his presence here tonight, we really don't fully appreciate. You young prophets should be rejoicing that, that you're in such an audience tonight. So, to no further ado, Brother Paul Cain, if you're ready, sir, come on up. Amen. Thank you. Yes, I want, I okay. want to see you. Um, all right, y'all, just, uh, just remain standing. I want us to just receive this. Brandon, would you please come up? I'm going to ask my son also, Ryan, if you'll just come up. Brandon shared something with us during lunch with Alex, which is his assistant. Alex had to fly out. There was just a miscommunication of when Paul would be leaving. And Brandon began to share a word, and Alex said, would you please give that to Paul Kane before he begins the, releasing the word tonight? So I'm going to go ahead and let Brandon uh, share that with Brother Paul, and he wanted it to be done publicly. Mm. Okay. How you doing, Paul I normally don't write down notes, but I just didn't want to leave anything out. Oops. I believe this is a real important time that we all need to hear God. Mm. Uh, when I came in on, uh, I believe it was Friday, the first night of um, of, the, of the meeting, uh, I began to uh, just admire just your presence, just. I was just, because I've heard many stories about you and, and followed you through the internet and through books and things. And, and uh, as I began to sit back there, the heavens just opened. And I could see there was a revolving door that was around you. And uh, there was angels that, um, and I know we've heard this book, Angel of Assignments, but I saw that there was angels uh, that were just fluttering out. And they had assignments, and most of them were because of your prayers for this generation and the things that you have not seen that you've upheld the Lord for some of the promises. And uh, when I was sitting back there, this angel about 12 feet tall, and I've had some encounters with some angels, but this specific angel, 
I have never seen. And um, it was about 12 feet tall, and it was all dressed in black. But I could identify that it was an angel from the Lord because it had blue eyes, and the presence was from God. And when he came, he identified himself as the protector. And he says that he, and, and, and where he came from, and this is where I just have to release to you from, what, from directly the way that I heard it because some of these things I, I, I have no understanding. And he says that he had came from the black hole. Wow. And that his assignment was from God that to protect the young prophets and apostles from falling back into a cave. Mm. And from what I started reading up the black hole and what I gathered from it was that some say that, that this black hole, it, if it does exist, it, I'm sure that it does exist, but I know there's a lot of theology behind that, but that it swallows the stars and the galaxies and what it does, it traps light and it doesn't allow the light to come out. And in, in my spirit, I was like, well, what are you doing here? And he says, the presence that Paul carries, I am attracted to that presence I am to go where where he goes wow. and um, I was just amazed and, and and when he began to to, to share with me uh, that you're the cat yeah that okay another season darkness just like Elijah was in a cave and uh, that he was drawn to this meeting because of the presence that you carry and uh, that there were angels on assignments that were following you directly from the throne. And the season is the first thing. Is the, the angel began to speak to me and he says that the, the main thing is this about the season is that the season, that the reason why your life is important is to, re, is to reveal the full identity of Christ oh, wow. and to give warning and hope to this generation. So I feel like there's going to be a fullness of Christ that you're going to experience uh, yeah. in your life. And the second thing this angel began to tell me is that the Lord is going to use your experiences and times of being persecuted in your life to bring forth a new revelation of upcoming events for this generation. So I felt like... Uh, there was real important events that that were upcoming, and and this is this is th this. He just began to speak to me, and I, and I was trying to uh, to gather all of this because it was just. I mean, heaven was just was just open. So all of a sudden, when you were sitting up here, I went into this other thing, and you were sitting in a barber chair, and there was an angel that had a hot towel under your chin, and it was hot, and he was prepping your face and he started shaving you and he was singing to you and he began to sing but in the words that I acknowledge he says you're never too old for a haircut <laughs> and I was like wow that's pretty weird <laughs> what, what's the deal with that well I got a little bit of stuff on that and one of the things that I, that I realized was that when Joseph was sent into prison that he never shaved but then when he got called up to be with Pharaoh, that he shaved his face because in their tradition, being clean shaven were those that dealt with royalty and dealt with purpose. So I feel like the Lord is really, uh, and you know, as he began to stroke, I saw years coming off. And I just saw, I saw strength coming to you. And... Uh, And, you know, I began to tell the Lord, I says, you know, Lord, this angel looks so familiar. I said, who is it? And, and there, was, there was several angels. And I don't understand totally the book of Revelation. But one of the things that, I, that the Lord told me, he says, the angel that was sent to John was the one that was shaving your face. Wow. So I really felt like, and, and, and through this, the Lord began to speak to me in, in this thing when you were up here. And I felt... Like he wanted me to inspire you that your job wasn't finished. Mm, praise God. And that you were going to, and through the reflection that you were like John in this generation to where he was going to shine on your face and they were going to see the reflection of Jesus and it was going to give them hope and purpose back in their life. Actually, um, 
had this word for you last time you were in San Antonio, and I didn't get to make the meeting, so I wanted to release this to you. Um, the Lord used a very unique word to me uh, when he started speaking to me about you. And the word that he used was um, 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 camaraderie. Camaraderie. Is that, that's the way you say it, right? Yeah. And what he said to me is that you had not really felt true camaraderie since the days of Brother Branham. And he said to me that, he says, you have loved ones, you have friends, you have people around you, but you had not really felt that type of camaraderie since those days. Mm-hmm. And, and he began to speak to me about that, and, and the thing that he began to, uh, to, to show me about is that how, how it was like nobody really understood me the way in those days I felt like I was understood by Brother Branham and some people like that. Mm-hmm. And so I asked the Lord, I said, well, Lord, what are you saying? Is this something that you're, you're bringing people like that to him? You're going to be the camaraderie to him? What is the deal with this? And the two things that he showed me, he said that he was extending to you an invitation to Exodus 33:11. And it's the verse that says that the Lord met with Moses face to face as a man speaks to a friend. And he said that he was extending that invitation to you to speak to him as the camaraderie that you longed for. The camaraderie that that at times you felt alone and you felt almost like Elijah. Lord, I feel like I'm the only one left. And he was going to come, he's coming to you with with the invitation of Exodus 3311. And then the next thing that he showed me was that he was raising up others that would operate in what you and Brother Branham have carried. And I saw where there was at times great regret that you had not been able to father children. And he said, but that you would father a generation. He said you'd father a generation. And that it would... And that this would be a generation that would really carry the very same spirit. And, and I believe in even greater in what you and Brother Branham have carried in, in the times past. And so it was a generational fathering that he was releasing. And the next, the last thing that he said to me was that he said that he was giving to you what you thought had passed you by. He said, I'm going, he says, I'm, it was like when the children of Israel came back to Kadesh Barnea. That was the place when the first time they'd come to Kadesh Barnea where they they said, we can't take this land. And then they went 40 years and then they came back to Kadesh Barnea and the Lord gave them another opportunity to take what they had missed in the past. And I I felt like there were things that you felt like, Lord, I... It's passed me by already. You know, these things that I thought, that I saw, that I, that I heard, and all that, I felt like there were some things that had passed me by, and the Lord said no. He said he was, he was bringing you back around to Kadesh Barnea, and the things that you thought had passed you by, he was, he was bringing them back to you now in this season. Amen? So, uh, Amen. you got anything, Dad, you want to... Would you just extend your hands? <clears throat> Father, we thank you. Oh God, I receive. We thank you, Father, for what you've done in this generation, for what you've done in this man. And this night we honor Brother Paul Cain. Yes. Father, we thank you that you have sustained him, that you have raised him up, and that you are inviting him into things that maybe he himself and others thought had passed him by. And Father, I thank you that you're inviting him to the very place that you invited Moses to. Exodus 33, 11. We just declare, Lord, that this is not only a servant of the Lord, but that this is a friend of the Lord. And we thank you, Father, for the face-to-face encounters that are still to come. We thank you, Lord, for the fathering that he still has in him for generations, for nations, for regions. He may not have fathered a, a natural child, but he is fathering spiritual children and generations and nations that still are in need of a father's heart. And so, Lord, we honor and we receive from Paul Cain today, and we thank you for what you have raised him up to be in this hour. We thank you for the voice of the Lord that rings true and clear through him, Father. And so, in Jesus' name, we bless him, and we just we just declare the strength of the Lord to just reside within him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you.